Hey guys, Jamie Schmidt here. I'm a DBT therapist and mental wellness coach based out of Houston, Texas, and I'm so excited to have you join me today for week two of our DBT Skills for the Holidays series. We got started last week by talking about vulnerability factors. We labeled some categories of kind of weak spots that many of us tend to find ourselves in at this time of year. We broke them down into five different sections. Troublesome interactions with family and friends, overspending, calorie binging, Overcommitment and depletion of personal energy slash resources, and past trauma slash kind of holiday induced um, mental wellness issues that um, tend to come up at this time of year and have some seasonal stuff with them as well. So if you went to my website, you had a chance to download the workbook and it had some journal kind of thinking questions and some exercises to go along with your vulnerability factors. So you had some time this week to think about what those are and how they relate to you personally. We start off with these because of the theory of neuroplasticity and knowing that like where we're coming from has set the pattern in our brain for where we tend to repeat our behaviors, right? So um, holidays are a very specific schema. There's something we only do once a year, but there's something that we kind of tend to do almost identically every year. And so if you've been doing the same crappy fight with your uncle every year at Thanksgiving dinner for 30 years, like your brain knows this, you're right? Like, oh, trigger, I go along the exact same path and I end up in the exact same place. So if we want things to be different, we have to understand where we're coming from. And so that's kind of where we jumped off last week. This week, our skill is an emotion regulation skill. It's called cope ahead. Um, it comes from our Anywhere, anytime skills is kind of what we consider emotion reg. They're for anything that um, doesn't involve extreme emotion dysregulation that can be helpful in any other situations. Um, the specific like subcategory this comes from is called reducing vulnerability to emotion mind. And so like, again, ties in exactly with where we were working last week. Um, Cope ahead is considered an imaginal exposure exercise. So it's where you're taking yourself through the event that you think you may be unskillful and then Imagining how you can be most skillful in this time, putting yourself in the actual situation and creating these new neural pathways so that when you get there, your brain is already primed and ready for you to behave in a different way to get these new and better results. So that's, um, that's kind of how the exercise is. Um, so when we are talking about it, go ahead and get one of your vulnerability areas in mind. Think about a situation that may come up within the next few weeks. We've got um, Thanksgiving and we've got Black Friday for sure. The, those are two already, you know, big ticket items within the next two weeks. And so um, kind of get a situation in mind so you can think about it as we talk about it and going through the steps. There are five steps to um, coping ahead. The first one being describing your situation in detail that you think is going to be your um, less than skillful area. So there are a couple of steps to this. We want to stick to only facts that other people would agree upon. So we don't want to have judgments in there. A big part of DBT is non-judgmental stance. Our brain loves judgments because they're these nice, simple little shortcuts. They're easy block box. I can check you and put you in that and I don't have to think further. Um, but what we found is a lot of negative emotion tends to come from the assumptions and stuff that we we bring with our judgments. And so when we, whenever we describe in DBT, we're always practicing non-judgmental stance and coming from that standpoint. <clears throat> so when you're doing your describe, you want to think of a couple of things. You want to think of some sensory details that are going to help you put yourself in the place mentally. So if we're doing a Thanksgiving dinner, like how's the temperature at this person's house? Is it always way too warm or freezing cold and you've got to bring that extra jacket? Um, what's that predominant smell when you walk in the door? Is it pumpkin pie or maybe it's sage and clove? Oh, who knows? Uh, but think of some sensory details because that really helps with the imaginal pieces to um, get present in that moment is if you can have some stuff, not just like thoughts, words, but also things that you would feel. <clears throat> so once you've described your situation, you've done your beginning of kind of setting the platform. The next step you want to do is then think of how you could be your most effective person in this. Think of all the skills you've learned through this year, whether it's from other YouTubers or from your therapist, friends, counsel, whatever. How can you approach this in a more skillful way than you've done in the past? A lot of times in life we tend to think about what we don't want. I want to avoid having this same fight with uncle so-and-so. Um, but what we know is that when you say I don't want something, you're like really again repriming that like old neural pathway. You're back in that nature of like I I'm feeling this way. I know this happens. This triggers this. Triggers this. Triggers this. And what we want to go about is thinking about what we do want. 
how we can create that new pathway, that different way of being. And so we want to be very detailed about our description of what we are looking for, not what we are looking to avoid. It's a really important piece. So step three is to do your actual exposure exercise, to put yourself in the place. There are a couple of things you want to think about. You want to have a quiet and um, like non-interrupted environment to do this, somewhere you can get still and be with your thoughts for a few minutes. So no TVs on in the background, put your cell phone on silent, leave it in the other room, get your spouse to watch the kiddos, give yourselves a few minutes to do this because it'll be much more effective if you can do it without an interruption. <clears throat> And then you want to get in this mind space, again, using your sensory things that you've thought about and um, just going through the activity. What, what is the situation? How can I cope effectively? What is going to be different about what I do this time? How am I going to change the pattern up so that we get different outcomes? And remember, it's not just this first move that changes things, right? You've got to think beyond that. So if I change my pattern of interacting with Uncle Bob, Bob's going to react to me, and that may not be a positive reaction, so I need to cope ahead for that possible negative reaction as well, right? Like, there may be some pushback. They may say, oh, this person's throwing up some limits. That's different. Let's see if I can get them to back off. So I've got to be prepared to stand behind my limits as well. And so when you feel like you have gone through the possible scenario, that concludes your cope ahead. You're there. You've done some, some practicing with how you're going to react and what things are going to be different, so you've laid down that new neural pathway. If you have effectively done an exposure exercise, you've actually created some of that anxiety in your body right now. And so the final step to this is to go ahead and do something to soothe yourself and bring that anxiety back down, which is really great, right? Like you've gotten there and so you've like created activation in your system, which is realistic because when you're in the situation, you're going to have activation. You're going to have these emotions and these negative energies like coming through you. And so it's important that you get to that place, but it's also important that you soothe yourself and bring yourself back down from that. <clears throat> if this is a situation that you are totally, totally stressed about, do cope ahead multiple times. Do it all week leading up to Thanksgiving. Um, that way, every time you do it, you're laying down this new pathway and you're priming it and it's getting stronger and it's more effective when it's time to actually be used. <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed this skill today. Um, just like last week, there's some things to look at in the workbook for checking out, you know, some thought questions and some questions to go along with as you're doing your exercise. Um, if you have any thoughts or questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, next week's video is going to be a little bit briefer. It's just a short thought about budgeting. Not really a DBT skill, but one of those things that when we do it, it can make for less problems in the future. And so I'm excited to talk about finances. I think they're an important part of the holiday, even though they veer a little bit from what my true specialty is. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week. Happy holidays.